Hello, this is Dr. Moyer, ready to talk about Chapter 2 with you. Um, I do have some things in the PowerPoint I want to discuss, but I want to make a note that I won't be going over the internal and external sex organs. I have posted um, a news message about this because there are a couple, or three videos actually, that go over male and female anatomy in much more detail and use much better props than I ever could. So that'll be much more helpful to you. What we will talk about um, is the ovulation and the menstruation cycle. And then I'll talk mainly about menstruation and some of the concerns that women have and some cultural beliefs. So some terms that American society use for menstrual cycle, the most common one is the period. And this comes from the phrase, the menstrual period. And people have just shortened it. Um, there are also other terms that people use, sometimes my monthly visitor or my monthly friend is visiting, is said, um, or sometimes my aunt Flo is showing up, Flo of course referring to the menstrual flow. And then there are other unsavory terms like on the rag um, or just bleeding. It really just depends on what people are comfortable using. And generally, society does use negative terms because they are uncomfortable with the menstrual cycle. They're uncomfortable talking about it. Um, the messages they received from their family, from their peers, from school, from church, um, from society in general has been that women and, and men should not talk about the menstrual cycle. It's something that should be hidden, um, even kind of secretive, but oftentimes something shameful as well. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit. When it comes to the women's reproductive cycle, there are some terms that you should be familiar with. Menarche actually just refers to the first time a woman has her menstruation. This typically occurs around age 12, but can happen anytime between the ages of 8 and 16. Um, some interesting theories about why females are starting menstruation earlier and earlier. Um, some believe that it's the hormones that are injected into dairy and meat products um, that we eat. Um, some believe that it has to do with, what's the other theory? Oh my goodness, I just completely drew a blank. <laughs> um, oh, pesticides and other chemicals that people are exposed to. Um, but but the the fact is that an earlier menstruation is linked to um, how heavy a child is. So the more the child, female child weighs, the earlier she will start menstruation. Uh, menopause refers to the end of menstruation and ovulation. Women have to go typically for a full year without having a menstrual cycle before they are classified as being in menopause. Um, perimenopause marks the time period before a woman's body begins its transition into menopause and this can last anywhere from two to eight years. And what typically happens is that the menstrual cycle becomes irregular, becomes different, um, the cycle is different, may stop menstruating for a few months and then may have one. Um, sometimes it's heavier, there's more cramping, etc. It just varies by by woman, what kind of symptoms she experiences. Amenorrhea refers to the absence of a menstrual cycle. Um, this is oftentimes linked to pregnancy, maybe the first sign of pregnancy. But there are other conditions that can cause a woman to stop menstruating. Um, being too thin or losing weight um, can be associated with not having a period. Um, also. Even stress can be associated with the stopping of the menstrual cycle. Um, regardless of why, a woman should always seek a physician's advice and um, speak to find out why she is not having a menstrual cycle because it can also be an indicator of other conditions. Excuse me. <laughs> With the ovarian cycle, there are three phases, and that's the same with the menstrual cycle, too, so try not to get them confused. The ovarian cycle, we're, we're just basically referring to when the egg is released. 
So during the follicular phase, the follicle stimulating hormone, hence why it's called the follicular phase, prompts the ovaries to develop a follicle and preparing to release a mature ovum or egg. Ovum, O-V-U-M, is the medical term. This is the first 10 days of the cycle. And then during the ovulatory phase, typically days 11 through 14, there is the preparation and the actual release of the ovum. And then the luteal phase, which are the two weeks after the mature egg is released, progesterone is secreted to sustain the endometrial lining. So this is typically a 28-day cycle, but not every woman is on a 28-day cycle. That's just the average length. The menstrual cycle coincides with the ovarian cycle, but it is a different cycle. This has more to do with the um, shedding of the uterine lining, and so they coincide together, when, meaning day one of the ovarian cycle coincides with day one of the menstrual phase. So during the menstrual phase, typically lasts from three to five days, the uterus shen, sheds the endometrial lining or the uterine lining, and this sometimes can be experienced as a painful process by some women um, because the uterine muscles are contracting, the cervix is dilating, as a woman sheds her endometrial lining and so some women experience cramping <clears throat> some more severe than others then the proliferative plo <laughs> sorry <laughs> proliferative phase lasts about nine days and it ends with ovulation again remember this is co-occurring with the ovarian cycle so it la it ends when the egg or the ovum is released and the uterine lining rebuilds itself, um, relies on a constant source of the female hormone, estrogen. And then the secretory phase begins with ovulation when the egg or the ovum is released and lasts 14 days. So it coincides with the luteal phase. And basically what's happening is the uterus is preparing for um, possible conception or implementation and so it's rebuilding and thickening. It's basically just preparing the uterus, or what's happening is the uterus is preparing for pregnancy. Um, every month this, this happens, and that's why we have a cycle. During the second um, subphase, the endometrium is actually expelled, and a lot you'll see the hormone levels decline, um, and then menstruation occurs. As I indicated earlier, I'm not gonna cover all of these, but the list to the left, sorry, here are the terms that you should know, and you should also know on this diagram where things are located. And so all of these terms are covered in your textbook. They are also covered in the videos um, in much more detail. So be familiar with this terminology as well as this terminology. Um, so this is the internal sex organs. The previous slide was the external sex organs for females. And again, you should know what their function is, where they're located, etc. Okay, a pap test, or a pap smear, as it's typically called, um, is recommended for females um, after they have engaged in vaginal intercourse or after the age of 21, whichever comes first. And they should have an annual pap smear until they turn 30. And then it's recommended every other year unless there's some sort of abnormal, abnorm, abnormal um, results. So what typically happens is the female goes to see her OBGYN or any physician or physician's assistant that is going to perform the pap smear and she's placed in what's called the M shape. You see the legs are shaped like an M. Um, she's laid on the table and typically told to scoot down to the end and put her feet in the stirrups, which are usually out to the side. Um, and so she's in a position where she can be examined. Then a speculum is, is inserted into the vagina. Um, so it actually is going inside 
and the end result is a view like this for the physician to see, um, actually examine the appearance of the vagina and the inside, and then to actually take a little brush and scrape some cells that will be stained and sent to the lab to be examined for um, abnormalities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, some concerns about the menstrual cycle that I just want to touch upon before we end. Um, a woman's feelings about menstruation do vary. Most of the time in American society, a woman views her menstrual cycle as something negative. Um, when a woman does have a positive view of it, it's usually because her family um, and her community have made an effort to celebrate menstruation and to teach children in adolescence that it's not something to be ashamed of and it's very natural and a woman shouldn't be, feel like she should have to hide it or pretend it isn't happening. Um, of course, cultural attitudes affect how somebody is taught about menstruation and everything about menstruation varies by culture, including intercourse. Some cultures have men abstain with women um, while they're having their menstrual cycle. Again, this just varies. The PMS that you sometimes hear people refer to, sometimes it's joked about, um, refers to premenstrual syndrome and can include anything from bloating to fatigue, cramps, cravings, headaches, um, sometimes just even mood swings, etc. And all of these can be avoided. Doctors recommend that women avoid caffeine, alcohol, salty or fatty foods, and try to get some exercise in a regular sleep cycle. Um, but if a woman does have PMS symptoms that interfere with her ability to go about her daily life, like going to work, you know, basically just being able to get out of bed, um, if she's not able to do that, she should see her doctor because they can prescribe something that'll ease the symptoms. Sex during menstruation, um, completely safe and natural, and it is a personal choice. Depends upon whether the female that's menstruating is comfortable with it, and it depends upon her partner, um, whether he or she is comfortable with it. Doesn't There's no fat and fast and hard rule about this. Um, but generally, a woman should be cautious because she can become pregnant if she's engaging in a course with a male partner. And she's also prone to vaginal infections, um, things like STIs, sexually transmitted infections, that can be picked up during intercourse. And so using protection is a, a general precaution that most doctors would and researchers would advise. Some interesting facts for you to know about menstruation. Um, a woman's menstrual cycle will actually synchronize with the phases of the moon in the absence of light, which I think is very interesting. Um, women who live together tend to synchronize their menstrual cycles, not, not on purpose, but it does happen over time. And this is a result of being exposed to something in the sweat of the women. And so research that looked at this has shown that if a female, two females living together, they were studying in pairs, were exposed to the sweat of the other female, that eventually their menstrual cycles would coincide. During ovulation, women are more likely to dress sexy. Um, this doesn't mean that every woman is, but this is the time period when they're more likely to do so. It is theorized that this is so she is more likely to obtain a male partner um, during ovulation and become pregnant. Um, during ovulation, a woman's sense of smell and sight improve, and women report a better sense of well-being, so overall they just feel better while they're menstruating. I mean, I'm sorry, while they're ovulating, not necessarily menstruating. During menstruation, um, they are more susceptible, their vagina is more susceptible to vaginal infections, and so, as I mentioned earlier, precautions should be taken if intercourse is engaged in. Um, women are also more prone to acne and <clears throat> sexually transmitted infections like herpes. And in some, some cultures, men experience what I like to call vagina envy, and they actually cut their genitals in a s symbolic way to 
mimic the blood flow or menstruation cycle that women experience. <laughs> Very interesting. So again, not penis envy, but vagina envy. That concludes this PowerPoint, and I, you'll be hearing from me on chapter three.